Hey everybody, this is Brandon, the founder and arranger of On Brand Music, and I would like to welcome you to the fourth of a series of five videos that I'm doing called The Five Fs. In these videos, I'm discussing some of my favorite marching band arranging techniques. The F I'm going to discuss in this video is find a key that works. As we know, not all keys that songs are originally in work for band. Some of them are just not band friendly keys. And even if they are a band friendly key, they might not work for the ensemble. So I'm going to give you three things to consider when trying to find a key that works. Uh, first is picking a band friendly key. Uh, for winds, the rule of thumb is kind of the more sharps or flats you have, the more difficult it's going to be to tune uh, because of the tendencies of the instrument. And what the instruments have to do is they have to manipulate it in some way. For example, I'm a trumpet player, and I know anytime I play my B concert in the lower register, I have to press down all three valves, but also extend my third valve slide so that I can bend the pitch down a little bit and I can be able to play in tune. And a lot of instruments have those little tricks and things that they have to do, and it makes it a little bit more difficult to tune. So that's one of the main reasons why we have to pick a key that's a little bit more band friendly and a little bit more centered to the entire ensemble. The second thing you want to do is consider the optimal range of the instrument. That range is the range that frankly most musicians are most comfortable playing in and that you're more than likely going to get the best tone quality production out of the instrument. This is especially important when considering writing for younger ensembles with less mature musicians. But even for mature musicians, this may be pretty difficult. For example, a good trombone player can play a high F, you know, two ledger lines above the staff. But if you ask them to play that high F for about three minutes straight, they might have some difficulty and they might experience some fatigue. On the flip side of that, if you ask them to play a low C, which is a second space C, it may be more comfortable for them, but the tone gets a little bit muddy if you're not careful and it's more uh, difficult to project in that register. So if you're confused or you're unsure about what ranges are appropriate for each instrument, you can use whatever search engine you're comfortable with or any arranging book that you pick up is gonna have that information provided. I have one here that provides the uh, optimal range chart for the woodwind instruments, then you go to the brasses and so on and so forth. And it's really helpful to consider that as you write. The next thing and the final step you wanna do is create an audio mock-up of the song. Now, this is something that you can use technology for, and I'm gonna show you a demonstration. Uh, here, I have uh, Ableton Live that I'm using, and what I like to do is, I've already beat mapped out the song, so it keeps track of the, uh, the tempo of the song, and it allows me to manipulate the sound. Um, so what I can do is change the key of the song right in the program, and it'll kind of help me listen as I write to identify uh, if the song is really a good key or not, or what key might work better. So the song I'm gonna show you now is a song that uh, is performed by an artist by the name of Nick Lamar that I co-wrote uh, and produced. And it's called Jealous. So I'm gonna play a little bit of a snippet of it for you right now. I'm just jealous. So as you could hear, the song was in a pretty bright key, it's in the key of A major, which is not necessarily a band friendly key. You're talking about three sharps in concert pitch. With trumpets, that's what, five sharps? So it's very, very difficult, especially for the brass players to play. Um, so what I'm gonna do here now, is I'm gonna take the song and I'm just gonna dial it back down to A flat. So here I'm gonna adjust and take it down a half step, just drop it down to semitone to A flat and now let's hear what it sounds like. Jealous, see you and him, I can't help it. And maybe I'm a little bit selfish. I miss the way you feel when I found it. Found it, I'm just jealous. Okay, so A flat is a much better band key, so I might take that and consider writing in that key. Now I could have taken it up to B flat as well, but you know, it's just a matter of preference. Now, I just want to leave you with this. The main thing when it comes to arranging is maintaining the integrity of the song. Uh, so, you know, when you're choosing a key, you want to make sure that you don't lose any of the style, or the feel of, of the song, and the overall general effect that the song is going to give you. You know, making sure that you're writing the correct rhythmic systems will help with the style, but sometimes the new keys might not translate well. So just use your discernment, use your creative license to make a decision about what key works best. Um, so, again, just a review, pick a band-friendly key, 
uh, consider the optimal range of the instruments, and then if you can, create an audio mock-up of the new key that you're uh, considering writing in. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for watching, and as always, be well.